In this week's video, I'm back using my high iron stoneware clay body, and I'll be throwing a simple two pound bowl, which is about 907 grams, just under a kilo. Quite often, after a day of repetition throwing, I take whatever clay is left in the bag, and I'll throw one or two individual pieces with it. This is one of those. So once the clay has been wedged up, and is completely smooth in texture, and void of any air pockets, it's time to begin. But first, a note on this pad of clay left over from the previous pot. I've seen many videos over the years of people throwing, and in between each pot, they remove this skim of clay and clean the wheel head. In truth, this skim of clay, as long as it's relatively dry and not like the slip that surrounds it on the outside, if instead it is covered in water, then it is useless and it should be removed. But if it is dry, it should be left, as it'll stick firmly onto the piece of clay that's slammed onto it, securing it in place firmly. I then throw the piece of clay onto the pad, and if it isn't perfectly centred, well, that's fine, because you can just push it back into the middle. With smaller soft lumps like this, you can get away with it if the piece is a bit off centre, but when it's a larger piece, I might spend some more time patting it into shape in order to get the piece of clay as centred as it can possibly be before adding water and centering it properly. I place the elbow of my left arm into my torso, and I push my body weight down onto it, and then with that arm, I lean my palm of my left hand onto the lump of clay as it spins. This anchors my movements and it keeps my hands incredibly steady as I centre. I then proceed to cone the clay up and down a number of times and throw the thick wad of clay into the appropriate shape for the bowl that's going to be made thereafter. And what I mean by that is that the shape you have at this stage is quite crucial and it'll influence how the rest of the pot goes depending on the form of course and how soft your clay is. For a bowl that's quite shallow with overhanging walls, I want a shape like this, as opposed to one that's much more narrow, like this. If I were to open this shape up, I'd end up with a lot less clay on the outside supporting the overhanging walls. So if you are making wide, shallow dishes, it really does help to have a wider, low shape like this. Once it's perfectly centered, I open it up with the thumb and index finger and create a sort of V-shaped hollow in the middle, as opposed to a flat base, like a more cylindrical pot would have. I then pinch the thick expanse of clay at the base, and I pinch it and pull it upwards, forcing it between a smaller gap between my fingers on the inside and my knuckle on the outside. And in this instance, instead of using my knuckle on the outside, I'm using a wetted sponge, which provides lubricant for the pull the entire way up. My aim for this bowl is to have walls of a relatively even thickness, but I want to leave some weight in the base. I purposefully leave about a centimetre to a centimetre and a half in the very bottom of the pot. That way there'll be enough material to trim a nice tall foot ring from. The other advantage of having excess clay in the base means that I can easily lift the piece off without having to throw the pot on a bat. I simply wedge my fingers into that excess clay and then very carefully manoeuvre it from the wheel head to the wearboard as I keep both my hands very level and very steady as otherwise the piece can very easily flop over to one side but you'll see that process towards the end. When I make bowls, I tend to coax the clay upward, perhaps a bit higher than I need it, and then from this high point, I'll gradually push it down into a more shallow shape. This isn't a process I rush, as compared to my medium bowls thrown from just one pound of clay, which I can do pretty much without looking. Whenever I'm throwing a new shape, or something that is a bit different, I'm always a bit trepidatious. With this shape, I wanted there to be a defined rim section, like the flange that encircles the classic dinner plate shape. So I push in carefully from the outside to define the region I want the flange to begin from, and then I throw that section so it flares out slightly. And now that the rough shape is there, I can begin to refine this thrown form. To define this outer section, I hold the metal so that it's hovering on the outside, and then I push the clay inside out against the metal edge as opposed to forcefully just pushing the metal into the clay, which wouldn't do any good, as the kidney, which is the name for the tool, would likely just catch on the clay, marking it or deforming the entire vessel. I then sponge out the remaining liquid, and then, with the same kidney, I begin to refine the interior form, scraping away all that wet, excess slip to reveal the tachyer clay underneath. And as I do these first few runs, I keep one hand on the outside, opposite of where the kidney is pushing against, in order to support the wall, and prevent it from falling down any further. And if you're using soft clay, like I am here, the overhanging walls will have a natural tendency to sag downwards. And this is only exacerbated if you throw very slowly 
or really oversaturate the clay and the walls with water. Because as the clay oversaturates, the walls literally begin to disintegrate and the pot's form weakens. The last thing I do is use the chamois leather to soften the rim. And I also bevel it slightly so it comes to a finer point. I begin by soaking the chamois leather and then I very carefully drape it all the way around the rim section. This softens the area and makes it uniform in texture. But a chamois leather isn't the only tool that does this. You can use the soft fold of skin between two fingers, or even just a flexible strip of plastic or a sponge. I then use an ancient blunted trimming tool to scrape away some of the excess clay from around the base. This creates a drier region of clay and a prominent groove into which I'll be able to wedge my fingers as I lift the piece off the wheel. I then take a twisted wire and slide it beneath the pot to separate the sticky clay from the metal wheel head. And then, using four fingers, I push them into the clay, equidistant, as if each finger was at the corner of a square. I then spin the wheel at the exact same moment I lift the pot away, which breaks any sticky seal there might be. And then I carefully place the pot down, and now I'll leave it exposed until it's leather hard, so it can be trimmed. I thought I'd quickly just go over the tools I use to make these bowls as ultimately they're very simple, and I'm a firm believer of only using the tools needed for the job. First is the chamois leather for smoothing and softening rims. Then there's the sponge, which is used for shaping the pot, pulling up the walls and mopping out the water. Then there's the metal kidney, and I try to use one that's appropriate for the shape of the pot I'm throwing. So as the interior curve of the bowl is fundamentally the most important part, I make sure I use a curved kidney as opposed to one which is mainly straight edged. And there's my ancient, blunted, and quite broken turning tool, which I simply use for gouging away the excess clay from around the base. And at last, there's the twisted metal wire for separating pots thrown on the wheel head or throwing bats. The fact that it's twisted really does make a big difference, as it creates a cut underneath the pot that's much less likely to stick back together, and it obviously cuts through far better than nylon or fishing line. That's just a quick overview. One day I should do a more detailed video that really goes into a lot more depth about all of the tools I use. Thanks for watching as always, and I'll see you next week.